Fujifilm just made tons of announcements in their last summit uh, on the 2nd of September 2021. GFX50S Mark II, uh, XT30 Mark II, XF 23mm f1.4 Mark II, XF 33mm f1.4. But for me, the most excited announcement was the new x -Trend sensor for 2022. So in today's video, I would like to discuss about this and explain briefly what is new about this sensor and what it means for us Fuji users. <laughs> So before we start this video, let me know in the comment if you watched the Global uh, Fujifilm Summit and uh, what was your favorite part of this summit. For me, definitely, I love the 23mm f1.4 and the 33mm f1.4, but also I was super excited, uh, you know, at the end of the summit when they were like, oh, one more thing. Uh, and they, you know, they talked about the stack sensor architecture. So Fujifilm just announced their new backside illuminated, stacked CMOS x -trend sensor. So that's a lot of keywords, but what does it concretely mean for us Fujifilm users and what can we expect for the future? So in today's video, I will first explain a bit what's new, what's the fuss about the new sensor and what it could potentially mean for us Fujifilm users in the upcoming years. <music> So until right now, Fujifilm was already using X-Trans backside illuminated uh, CMOS sensors. So what this did was basically to allow less noise at a higher ISO, a sharper rendering, film grain like at a higher ISO that we love about Fujifilm, right? Better low light performance and a lower fabrication cost of its sensor that allowed Fujifilm to be overall really competitive on the market for what it proposes. Now, the new architecture uh, proposed a stacked version of this sensor. So that's where the real improvement comes from. So basically what it means is that usually on a camera sensor, you have one layer that will both acquire the light, process it and transfer it to the information uh, to your body, to your camera body. Now in the stack architecture, there will be two layers. One layer will be responsible for acquiring the light and another layer will be re responsible for processing this data and transferring it to your camera body. By separating those two layers, you can have a higher pixel density on your light acquiring layer and more processing, more logic on your uh, processing layer. So this allows you basically to have higher resolution and faster processing on the information that you acquire, whether it's video or stills. So what does it mean for future Fujifilm camera that will use that, this particular architecture? Because there will be more space on the light acquiring layer, the first layer that I mentioned, there will be higher pic pixel density, meaning a higher resolution, but also more space for the light to be acquired. So a better low light performance. This is also kind of confirmed by their announcement of the 23 mm f1.4 and the 33 mm f1.4. Those lenses are supposed to support resolution as high as 40 megapixel. So yeah, I think we should get excited because it seems like higher resolution uh, Fujifilm sensors are coming uh, in the next year. Now, if we look at the second layer that I discussed about, um, having a separate uh, processing layer means that we could have faster and better processing. At the moment, the X-T4 is capped at 30 frames per second for electric shutter and 50 frames per second for mechanical shutter. So having a second separate layer could mean increase uh, these capabilities by two. Maybe we will even see, uh, you know, 60 frames per second uh, in the coming years. In terms of video, this could mean that from next year we could see 4K 120 FPS in a Fujifilm body. Now, if you're not excited by that, I don't know what can get you excited, but I definitely am. When it comes to autofocus, the way that uh, Fujifilm cameras autofocus right now is by doing uh, phase detection. And phase detection um, basically use the two layers that I discussed about, right? Right now it's done in a single layer, but having two layers could mean improve autofocus because there would be some dedicated logic on the second layer of the Fujifilm camera 
meaning that what some people describe as one of the weaker points of Fujifilm, which is its autofocus, could be greatly improved and uh, being on par with the uh, other autofocus system like Sony or uh, Canon. And finally, one more point that I would like to discuss is computational photography. So what if you could add bokeh on your picture or you know blur some, some part of your picture or sharpen some part of your picture directly in your camera? This is basically what Apple is doing nowadays with their iPhones using computational photography. Now imagine that you could do the same with your Fujifilm camera. That opens an other world of possibilities, right? And now I think that the world is moving more and more towards computational photography and Fujifilm is getting ready uh, to get into this world too with this next generation sensor. So as you can tell I'm very excited about uh, this new generation sensor and what it could mean for us Fujifilm users. So I hope that this video helped you to understand a bit more about the new generation sensors that uh, Fujifilm announced and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to uh, leave a like, uh, a comment down there, consider to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!